Dear friends, it's me, Bishop John R. Stevenson. I want to welcome you to the Red Sea Baptist Church God's House of Deliverance on this wonderful Pentecost Sunday. Holy Spirit's already fell in the place. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our service today. I want to lift up Reverend Stevenson, who will be bringing the message today. Join me as we would. Father, we thank you so very, very much for this woman of God that you have put in our midst to bring forth the word of life today. Prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the things, Father, that you've already put into our bellies to speak to us. Let it fall on good ground today so that we'll see the effects of some 36 or 100 fold fruit. We lift her up, touch her now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, thank Grace you. her up, God, on every side. Encourage her right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. We know that she's anointed. We already know that. So we thank you for the anointing mm -hmm. that rests upon mm -hmm. our life to preach and teach this gospel to us today. We sit at the edge of our seat with expectation. We know something wonderful and something powerful is going to happen. We will not be the same after this. And so we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So uh, John Stevenson, our worship, uh, our worship minister, is going to come and give our last inspirational song. And after that, the hymn of affirmation will be sung. And then we'll receive the woman of God in the pulpit to bring forth the word. Enjoy. <laughs> God be the glory. God be the glory. Now is your time to make him your king. Yes, sir. Get off the throne and let Jesus reign. Now is your time to make him your king. Get off the throne and let Jesus reign. Let Jesus reign. Let Jesus reign. Get off the throne and let Jesus reign. Let Jesus reign. Get off the throne and let Jesus reign. Now is your time yes, Lord. to make him your king. Get off the throne and let Jesus reign. Let Jesus reign. Let Jesus reign. Get off the throne and let Jesus reign. Let Jesus reign. Let Jesus reign. Get off the throne and let Jesus reign. Now is your time to make him your king. Get off the throne and let Jesus reign. Now is your time to make him your king. Get off the throne and let Jesus reign. Let Jesus reign. Let Jesus reign. Get off the throne and let Jesus reign. Let Jesus reign. Let Jesus reign. Get off the throne and let Jesus reign. Now is Get off the throne and let Jesus reign. Let Jesus reign. Let Jesus reign. Get off the throne and let Jesus reign.
for the throne of grace. Thank you, O oh gracious and heavenly Father, for this day, Lord. Thank you, Lord, as we observe and commemorate Pentecost Sunday, Lord, when you sent Holy Spirit himself to dwell with us all in the earth. We thank you, Lord, that you've given this opportunity to stand before your people today. So I come humbly right now, Father, asking you in the name of Jesus that you remove anything and everything that's not a part of you today. Father, I pray right now as I lay myself on the meat hooks of this altar that you would tear away all flesh, Lord, that you may be glorified in and through me, Lord. Lord, don't let me say anything that's contrary to your word or your will, Lord. But let me preach the uncompromising gospel to your people today, Lord. I pray, Father, that as you're using me, Lord, that I be an instrument fit for the master's use today. Magnify and glorify yourself. I pray for the people today. Not that just those that are in this building, but those that will hear this word. That you've already begun to give teachable spirits and receptive hearts. Mm -hmm. That they will definitely want to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying mm -hmm. to the church. Holy Spirit, my prayer that you will speak. We hear and we obey. Holy Spirit, please, sir, have your way. And it's in Jesus' holy and mighty name we mm -hmm. do pray. Mm -hmm. Only those agree said amen. 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 Soldiers in the army of the Lord, present arm. This is my weapon. I am armed and dangerous. Look out, devil, the fight is on. Amen. Amen. If you would turn with me, please, as we continue in Revelation. All right. I thank God for the deacon this morning where he went to the scripture. Uh, Revelations 2. And I believe that where I left off at last week, I'm going to go to, yes, verse 17, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amen. Revelations 2, verse 17. When you have found it, would you please acknowledge by saying, Amen. 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 That's Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. And I'm patient. Mm -hmm. When I see everybody, well, most of everybody be there, I will make sure that I go here and I find it. We there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And the word of God reads. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone. And on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Amen. Thank God for the reading of his word, but even more so the power and the ability to do his word. You may be seated. Amen in the presence of a life-changing team. You know, last week, and this is a continuation, we do say welcome to our online audience. If you were with us last week, we're in the book of Revelation. Uh, we started in chapter 2 last week, uh, talking about what the Spirit is saying to the churches. But the question was last week, and it still is, are our ears tired yet? Okay. Are we still listening or hearing? Are we listening or are we just hearing? Uh -huh. All right. Now, I explained last week that when we see the word hearing here in the scripture, that it is more so refers to the listening. Hearing is that, well, it's just a physical thing. You can hear things and be not paying any attention to them. You know what I mean? Right. But listening is when you give it your attention. Right. Listening calls mm -hmm. effort. Mm -hmm. Hearing does not call any effort. So I gave the definition, okay? That hearing in this, and when we look at the Greek for hearing here in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, which is where we're going to be this morning, this afternoon, this hearing is called listening where you're actually paying attention, actually sitting on the edge of your seat, uh, totally intentive because you want to hear in order to have a response, to give the proper response. Not just any response, because we talked about that last week. You know, we sit and we listen. 
We listen just so we can give a response. We be quiet. That's what we do. We be quiet so that we can, our turn can come and I give a response. Right. But that's not the same thing. When here is where you're listening in order to, to get the information you need in order to respond properly. Right. And that is what God is saying, what Jesus is saying, because as I said, if it's in your Bible, uh, if you have a Bible, it should be written in red because the Lord Jesus is speaking. Right. This is the revelation of the Lord Jesus to John the Apostle, okay? Right, right. And so he's talking. Last week, we stopped that. I want to say that we stopped that. Did we go to Thyatira? We did go to Thyatira. Can I yeah. visit Thyatira one more time, please? Mm -hmm. I think that's where we left off at, right? right. The church of Thyatira. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you can go in your Bibles at right on down in Revelation 2 at verse 18, talking about the church at Thyatira. And I, I went there a little bit and told you that this church was the church that was deceived. Right. Oh, yeah, the church that was deceived. Uh, and I want to revisit that because, believe it or not, we have a lot of deception in the church right now. Yes, Even with the doctrine yes, of, the, you know, you know, I talked last week about with, with the church at Pergamos and all these, at, uh, all of those uh, to where uh, 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 they, 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 they were listening to the, had the doctrine of the Nicolaitans and all of that. Well, we got the, and, they, and I refer to it as the doctrine of devil. Well, we got strange doctrine now. Let's go ahead and say this. Because I talked about last week about, as you read here, it talks about Jezebel, the, the so-called prophetess, which was not. Uh, she called herself that. The, the Bible says that in, in verse 20, it said, Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allowed that woman who called herself a prophetess. Mm -hmm. She was never a prophetess. She called herself that, Okay. And she taught and gave a doctrine that was of, of seducing the, the people for, to immorality. And, and it says, eat things that sacrifice the idols. But let me go ahead and break that down to you. It's when, the, 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 to bring it to modern day right now, it's when you get a spirit that's operating the churches upon a manipulation. Could I just put it like that? In other words, it comes in and it manipulates. It kind of like controls. It's like a cult. That's what cults are. Believe it or not, that those that claim that they represent the, the Lord Jesus uh, and, and, and you got a cult leader and he's the only one that can hear from God. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. And then he goes there and takes the Bible and the word of God and twists it. OK, same exact thing with with sororities and fraternities, the Masonic lodges and all these other ones. They are a cult because they will claim to use the word of God. Right. To manipulate the people, but they're twisting the doctrine, hmm. the teaching. New Age, this is the newest thing right now, the New Age movement, right. where they take it and pretty much you can do what you want to do. Yeah. You can worship God like you want to. You can have the kind of relationship with God that you want to have with it. And, 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 and then they twist the scripture. Hebrew Israelites, same exact thing. Oh, yeah. All of these people right here is a doctrine that's been twisted for manipulation purposes. That's what it boils down to. They're not listening. This, they have no revelation from God. They're taking and teaching to, in order to manipulate and control people. And we have to be, listen, he said it was going to be like that. He says it. He said in the end time there's going to be false teachers and false prophets. There's even going to be false Jesuses. You better come on here. Well, they're going to be the claim that they're going to be the Lord themselves. This is why we have to show. And he's talking to churches. This is the warning way before we were even thought about. When he gave the revelation to John, when he told John, listen, write these things. Write these things. And that's exactly what he did. We look here and we, we see that there's, there's some of these, a lot of the doctrines that we have and that, 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 that the church of Thyatira and the, back then, but it's churches now because remember I told you that every one of these churches, seven of them, represent the condition of a Christian. Mm -hmm. It ain't just a specific, specific church. It's the individual because we are many bodies, many members of what? One, one body. body, the universal body of Christ. And so what you kind of like believe and, feel and fall off into, 
That's where you'll go and assemble yourselves. Y'all understand what I'm saying to you? It, yeah. It's just as simple. And, and you see this, this is why we have separate denominations and all of these. It's because of what we believe that the word is saying. It's what we believe that what God is saying in his word because of teaching. And so he says this, and he's addressing these particular ones, and they're still present today, about what he has against them. See, when we see these things like that grace message, y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I can call some names, Joseph Prince, you know. We preach this grace message. In other words, you know, you already saved by grace, so no matter what you do, you know, you're still saved by grace. So basically, you can do what you want to do. No. No, no, no. Let's read the whole Bible. All right. Let's read the whole scripture. And any teacher and preacher of the soul, supposed to be a preacher of the gospel, that only preaches part of the Bible, like the, only the love of Jesus, but yeah. never the judgment of God. Yeah. That's what we are talking about. Those are the churches that are being, they're manipulated. Mm -hmm. See, anytime I'm going to sit here and teach you only what your itching ears want to hear. That's what the Bible says. That in the end time, in those days, we're going to heap up those that, that's going to gonna, that's gonna cater to your itching ears, what you want to hear. And if you're preaching a thing contrary to that, you know that you know you're not going to be popular, so you won't do it. So we claim that we're preaching the gospel, but we're only preaching certain things, so we want to offend people. Well, I'm reminded that the Lord Jesus himself was a confrontational Lord. Yeah. Everywhere he went, he got contention, did he not? Yeah. 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 Even the religious leaders, and I ain't got to that church yet, okay? <laughs> but in this, we need to understand that one is a controlling spirit was in the church of Thyatira. And those controlling spirits are still, they're just not, listen, they're not bullying you. They do it with subtlety. Mm -hmm. In other words, Things that I, I give you a good example. When you start accommodating the people rather than going by what God is saying, all right? You know what I'm talking about? Oh well, you know the people they wanna they wanna they want a coffee shop in the church. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Why you want a coffee shop in the church? You can't get your coffee before you come from from the house. Everybody got the little quick, nobody got to percolate stuff more. You got the little curries. They work just like that. And, right. and, and listen, if nothing else is over on a Sunday morning, you can bet you that the donut in the coffee shop mm. is over. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they they going to make that money. Yeah, right. So my question is, why you got to have one? And then we, we come back, and this is how the subject is. Well, you know, if we had it, we can get the people's money rather than them, them giving it to the secular. See what I mean? Uh -huh. Manipulation. Subtle, it's very subtle, because you know what? Mm. There's nothing wrong with coffee, is it? Mm -hmm. No sin in drinking coffee. And don't that sound like it makes sense? You know what? Why get a, that, that place over there when I can go to my church and give that the money? Mm. Feed back into myself. Pay myself. Mm. Subtlety. The Lord showed me that, see, it's about greed. And pride is what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. And when you have greed and pride together, you tend to be led astray by some things. Okay? Let's look at Luke 6.13, and then we'll come back over here. We're going to look at Luke 6.13 right quick. See, the bottom line is this right here. You can't serve two masters. Do you know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're either going to hate the one and you're going to love the other one, or vice versa. Luke 6.13, let me know when you're there. Make sure I'm in the right place. Luke 6, 13. That's not it. I'm sorry. Let me go backwards. I think I, I, I think I wrote it down backwards. How about that? Right. I have been known to do that. I'm going to ignore that. Yeah. But we're talking about the circuit. What we're supposed to be trying to take you is where we cannot serve two masters. Mm -hmm. You're either going to love one and the other. He says that you cannot serve man and mammon. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what greed is, by the way. Mm -hmm. Okay? Greed is mammon. And so with that being said, when we look at the church of Thyatira, 
you know, we want to, we, we are all right, and it's very subtle because they, they some churches, and I'm not talking about, I'm just saying that Thyatira church is the one that have nothing but a love message and never a judgment message, mm -hmm. never a sin message, never tell you about your condition. I've heard that been preached that a person I already know they're in sin. No, they do not. How can they possibly know it? How can they possibly know it? They don't have the word to show them that. Because, you know, we live in a, listen, not in the age, this has always been like this, majority rule, right? Mm -hmm. Did he not say the word that brought, brought us the way to leave destruction? Let me tell you why he said that. Because majority rule, okay? Right. And we know that the enemy is the what? Controlling prince here on this earth, okay? Now, he is the one that's influencing everybody. But if everybody is doing it, why would I think that it's wrong? Mm -hmm. When majority rule. Everybody mm -hmm. can't be wrong. Right. That's the way we see it. But it mm -hmm. is a true statement. The Bible tells us that if it's against the word of God, then it is wrong. Amen. 1613. 1613? Okay. Thank you, Bishop. See, he went there and found it. I ain't going to call him my help me because that's not what he is. He's a bishop. Amen. <laughs> I'm his help me. Thank you. Uh, it's 1613. That's where I messed up. I didn't put my other one over there. Right. So, 1613, no man, no servant, right? If you're mm -hmm. a servant, you can't have two masters, no way. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's not, yes, no, you can't have two masters. It's impossible. You've got to belong to one. Mm -hmm. And because we know we're servants of God and we're bond servants, we choose to be servants. Is that right? Mm -hmm. God is not forcing us. No servant can serve two masters, either he will hate one and love the other or else he would be loyal oh, to right. one and despise the other. That's why you cannot serve God in mammon. And I appreciate Bishop with that. So with that being said, we have to understand that God is talking, and remember I said last week, we have to find ourselves in these churches. Okay. We have to find ourselves in these churches. Mm -hmm. Where, what, 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 you Go back and study it. Revelation 2, chapter 2, and Revelation chapter 3. A lot of folks are going to read Revelation, but Revelation is going to help us. Especially if we're born again believers. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have a problem with revelation. Yeah. Right. Now, who should have right. a problem with revelation right. is folks that ain't saved. Because right. there's some very gruesome stuff in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, let's go to the next one. Uh, back to back in Revelation chapter 2, we're going to look at the church of Sardis. And it's actually going to be in Revelation 3, 1 through 3, where it's going to start at. Amen. The church at Sardis. If you're there, would you say amen? Amen. amen. Not you. Not you, man. Are we there? Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 3, starting at verse 1. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works. That you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Ooh, we. Mm -hmm. Dead church, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, how you know a church dead? Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found, I, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Now I'm gonna tell you, so I'm gonna stop right there in verse two for a minute. Look what he says, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that mm. are ready to die. Mm. In other words, take note of that that's ailing. Uh -huh. Do something, don't just let it die. Right. Mm. Do something to save it. Right. Remember therefore how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. This is what I was telling my daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't know. Yeah. You, you have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. And look what he says in verse 6. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Mm -hmm. Now, the church at Sardis, who is this? This is a church that has no power. Mm -hmm. No power. It's a ritual church, mm -hmm. not spiritual. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's church goers. Yeah. 
-hmm. It's people that say, and, and let me tell you why they do it. You know why people go to church? Why? That ain't saved. Mm -hmm. Three reasons. Can I tell you? Mm -hmm. One, because they think they're saved. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because they think they're saved, and that's what they're supposed to do. Because that's what saved what? People do. Go to church. Second thing is because they want to bargain with God. If I go to church, God won't. He'll take care of me. Mm -hmm. He won't. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And three, to appease other people. Mm -hmm. Now, that, that can work in two ways, appeasing people, okay? It could be to where you want to make sure that you look, that you don't look like a bad person in front of them, all mm -hmm. right? Or three, to where you can be condescending toward them. That's the truth. I'm just, I'm just giving it to you like he gave me. Mm -hmm. Three reasons that a non-believer goes to church. The first one, of course, is this deception. deception. I just talked right. about that before. Yeah. Well, they don't know that they, they, they figure they saved, and, you know, but they ain't had a relationship. Because this is the thing. They're one person on Sunday, mm. and the other six days, they're a totally different person. Wow. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he's what? Mm -hmm. New creature. Mm -hmm. So, but but this, this, church goers is what I call it. religious ones, pious. They have impure motives for the reason they go. I just gave you right two of them. Mm -hmm. and, and and the thing is, is that they have no fruit, and they have no fit vessel. And you can see they have no fruit. Mm. Not that the master would receive. See, let me tell you what what we call fruit. And I'll say it: when you see the preacher. Or people that go to church that all dress nice and they drive in the Cadillac and the Jaguars and all this, you're like, ooh, we they blessed, right? Right. Okay. So, but people in the world do the same thing. Dress nice, right? Mm -hmm. Drive nice mm -hmm. luxury cars, have nice houses. So the question is, what that's got to do one with another? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why. Because we look, tend to look at people to determine when they are successful. Mm -hmm. We tend to look at how people dress and what they have material-wise mm -hmm. to determine their success. success. Uh -huh. We tend to bring that over into the spiritual order. Quote, the churches say, well, they must be successful in the church because they dress that. That is not, uh, see, I have spiritual blessings in heavenly places. See, that's why it's always good to testify about something that God that did in your life spiritually. Because, listen, the enemy know how to give his own right. material blessings, all right? And God is going to do the same thing for us. There's nothing wrong with us testifying when God done blessed us and gave us a little extra money. Mm -hmm. Or we done seen something extra in our bank account that miraculously come down. We don't know where it came from, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. It's all right to do give God a but the real blessing of the church and of the believer is when we get a revelation that God has showed us how to live our lives better right. or how to how to live and get along with others better. Right. I was telling, um, uh, going back to Janine once again, we were talking about, you know, there was, she, she said aggressive around her, aggression is around her. And we said, well, you know, the atmosphere around you is like that because yeah, exactly. You're giving birth to it, and you instead of feeding that monster. Right. You go in aggressive. Right. Everybody around you go in aggressive. Right. Mm -hmm. So guess what? It can't be nothing but aggression, and it feeds off that. But if you go in mm -hmm. with a different perspective right. and different perception right. and different outlook, you go in with joyfulness and peace and say, you know what? I'm commanding peace. Right. I'm commanding joy right. to be right. in this place. Yeah. It's going to happen. Right. Yeah. That's what the power of the believer has. Yeah. The power of the believer has. Because, see, people don't cause us how to react. Come on, y'all. All right. People don't cause us how to act. Right. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Regardless of what's going on around me, right. I still got joy. Right. Yes. I ain't concerned about happiness. Because right. that's based on a temporary, right. I like to call them temporary fixes. But that's based upon what's happening around me right now. Right. When what happened down in South Texas last week, my heart grieved, but did you think that I was going to let that change my outlook that God still wasn't God? Right. Right. I, I, I know this right here. He's in charge still. He's still all sovereign.
sovereign. I don't care what nobody say. And he's all sovereign. There's nothing happening in this earth unless he calls it or allow it. Now, I may not know why he allowed it. I may can't see right now, but I know his purpose. And I trust him. Mm -hmm. Completely. Mm -hmm. That ain't weighed my faith. Mm -hmm. That ain't weighed my faith. And that's what we have, to, that's what we have as the believer. See, people in the world, all these temporary things is what has them feeling happy and, right. and, and, and carefree. You know what I have? making me happy and carefree is knowing that if I don't get up another day, mm -hmm. I'm going to be in the presence of the Lord. All right. mm -hmm. You know what? I ain't got to worry about hell. Mm -hmm. Now, hello, somebody. All right. You know what else makes me happy? That the Lord told me that if my ways please him, yeah. he'll make my enemies to be at peace with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if my ways please the mm -hmm. Lord, I'm not concerned about what, what, what snare trap the enemy got for me. God going to take care of me. Mm -hmm. Because he tells me that if I'm willing and obedient, I will eat the good of the land. Uh -huh. Now, you know, a lot of us are obedient, but we're not willingly obedient. Right. We begrudgingly obedient. Yeah. We kicking and screaming the whole way. Yeah. But when you're willing and obedient, you should eat the good of the land. I believe God. I don't know about y'all. Hmm. I believe God. But, uh, 2 Timothy 3, 5 says something like this. Uh, and you can run there. I'm going to run there right quick. Um, and and I'm uh, hoping I'll beat you there. How about that? Second Timothy 3, 5, I said. That's right. That's where it's at. That's where it's at. Because I was talking about this church that has no power. All right? right. It's church goers. It, 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 it's no fruit. Uh, 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 they, 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 when I say no power, what I, what I mean by that? What's that? You don't have no power to withstand or to stand. All right. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. You can't withstand anything, and you can't stand for nothing. Right. How many of y'all know if you can't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything? Right. 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 And everything. Right. Are we at 2 Timothy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 3, 5. Amen. See, and let me go back right here. I got, got to go back because there's a whole lot of commas, okay? Can I read this from verse 1? Mm -hmm. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will what? Come. For men will be lovers of themselves. Uh -huh. Y'all see that yet? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lovers of money. Yeah. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Y'all know it's real. People real bold now. They don't care nothing about God. Uh-huh. Disobedient to parents. I don't even got to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Unthankful. Unholy. Unloving. Unforgiving. Ooh, Jesus. Now, it's sad for that to be in the church, right? Slanders without self control. Ooh, we <laughs> brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, he's talking about, you know, the word is talking about people over in general, but it's sad that it's all, he's talking about the church too, mm -hmm. of people in the, te wow. in the church, both in the church. Having a form of godliness, mm -hmm. but denying his power. And look what the word says. From such turn away. Hmm. From such turn away. Mm -hmm. If there's no power in the church, if there's no power in the church, why is the church even operating? The Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. And if the salt has lost its flavor, what good is it? Talking about the church. We're the light of the world. We don't hide up under a bushel. We're supposed to be bold in our telling others about Jesus. Bold in our walking for the Lord. But you cannot do that if you're one way on Sunday. You hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, and I have the favor of God, but then I find you cussing on Monday. Right. And that's the next day after Sunday, by the way. That's the next day, the next day. It don't even last for 24 hours, is what I'm saying. Or oh, you're doing some other thing. What, what breaks my heart more than anything since when I be on social media and I see people uh, post scripture and turn around and post a horoscope. Mm. <laughs> that does something to me. Mm. Let me tell you what's, what hurts me even worse. To see the bishop, not you bishop. Oh, yeah. But see the bishop or apostle, <clears throat> you know, go there and I'm talking about, you know, 
this is strategic, this is the strategy God then gave for the church, for the kingdom of God, and blah, 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 blah. Then you turn around and tell me to meet you at the next uh, 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 Zeta meeting. Oh. Or Kappa meeting. I'm just saying. I just talked about not serving two masters this right. this mm-hmm. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. That's why ain't no power in the church. Mm-hmm. That's why ain't no power in the church. And what little miracles or so-called miracles right, they're right, doing right, 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 right. is the devil doing things because they told you he was gonna be a replicator. Yeah, 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 yeah. And by the way, it's only temporary. <laughs> if you hear people come out, I went to this hymn. I went to this service and I and I and I and I, and you know I, I they healed me I got delivered from this and then they go back to it. I told you when God do it, mm-hmm. when God do it, mm-hmm. ain't gotta be no do overs. Mm-hmm. Right? I ain't talking about nobody. You know I'm just talking, right? Mm-hmm. Let's go to Matthew seven right quick, verses twenty one through twenty three because you need to see this as I run on because I want to talk a little bit about what God then showed us uh, on this day. Is you all right? I'm fine. Okay. Thank you. I don't want you to get no back problems. Because I know. I've been there. Mm-hmm. Matthew 7, starting at verse 21. When you've gotten there. You know, one of the places, and I and I hope I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, me and Bishop talk about it. We're not talking about nobody, but we say this right here. When we pass the Catholic Church on, 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 Saturday evening or Sunday morning, you know, that parking lot is full. Mm-hmm. And this is what we say. They are faithful. They faithful. Faithful to the wrong doctrine, but nevertheless, they faithful. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? And so God talks about those that are faithful, uh-huh. but no power. Mm-hmm. You, you're not doing anything to, to mm-hmm. affect the world. Right. You're bringing them into a system that, that's manipulation. I just talked about it, did I not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's religious. Yeah. Pious, being pious. You know what I'm saying? Are we there? Y'all there? Matthew yeah. 7, 21? Yeah. It reads there. Not, 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 not everyone. <laughs> not everyone who says what? To me, Lord, Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Y'all listening? Mm-hmm. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. How you know the will of the Father? You got to know the word of God. Because it's written. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Come on here. Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. Can you wonder how they could do that in the name of Jesus? Right? Mm-hmm. And this is what Jesus said. And then I would declare to them, I never knew you. Mm. Depart from me. You who practice lawlessness, I think the King James says, you workers of iniquity. Mm -hmm. I never knew you. I like that part. I never knew you. So while you was claiming you was doing this for me, remember I told you, impure motives. I talked about that, right? Mm -hmm. Impure motive is what we're talking about. While you're doing that, you're not serving me. You're doing things for I serve. You're doing things to be pleasing to men. You're doing things, let me tell you something else. Bargaining with God, doing things to bargain with God is not acceptable. Impure motive. The reason that we do right is because we love the Lord. We love the Lord because he first loved us. That's why we do what we do. Somebody said, faith without works is dead. That's exactly right. But we don't work to get salvation. We work, we do the works of the Lord as a result of our salvation with him. I witness to people not because I'm trying to get a check mark on my ticket to get to heaven. I witness to people because I have the same heart that God has that he don't want nobody to perish. Mm -hmm. And by the way, because I love him, I obey him. He told me to go ye therefore and teach and make disciples. That's why I'm a witness. Because I love him and I obey him. Many of us love our parents. And I know you didn't obey your parents all the time. Is that right? Mm -hmm. But majority of the time, right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Majority of the time? 
Yeah. And when they wasn't looking, you probably didn't obey them, you know. But <laughs> but it came with that, and, and that was, but that's what happened. Let me show you how sin progresses. When you're little children, you don't know how to obey, yet you have to be taught to obey. Is right. that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, then they get to a level, like right now, those two little people right there, they're still learning to obey because you have to teach them to obey. Mm -hmm. Now, they'll get to a level at about 10, 11, they know what obeying means. Mm -hmm. They know what the consequences are of disobeying. Mm -hmm. Then we get somewhere along about 13, 14, we get a rebellious spirit in us, right? Mm -hmm. To where, I, oh yeah, I know the consequences. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I'm willing to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That mm -hmm. brother said yesterday, say, you know, I, I knew the consequences, but you know, mm -hmm. I was going to get a whooping. Yes, yes, whoop me. I take the whooping. Mm -hmm. You know what I was saying? Somebody wasn't whooping right. right. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I said. Right. <laughs> Listen, that's all yeah. I said. <laughs> Somebody wasn't whooping right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Because you put the right whooping on yeah. them. Like I said, even at 17, they're going to lay down and go to sleep. Yeah. You hear what I say? Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. Because the, the young man brought up a good point yesterday. He said, well, you know, whooping all the time, sometimes. And I do agree with that. That sometimes there are certain children, because you got to know your children, right. that, that That's whoopings right. don't work on them, that other things are more effective. Right. Right. Whoopings can be effective, but they may not be the best effective way. Okay? Mm -hmm. And don't you, all, don't you all always... Because the thing is, it's not punishment. Remember, Jesus, thank you, Lord, hallelujah. See, that's the thing that we had to, when I got saved, what I learned. See, chastisement, uh, whether it's whoopings or, or whatever, it's not punishment for something that you did or you didn't do. It's discipline. Mm -hmm. It's to get you to be disciplined in an area. And that's what we got to understand. We have to understand, discipline is always to, to, to help down the road, farther right. down the road. Right now, we're doing the discipline so that farther down the road, you are have what you need in order to make a right decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn that. I used to hear it all the time say, I'm not punishing you, just disciplining you. I didn't get it. I said, no, it feels like punishment to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is what punishment feels like. I did something wrong. I got a whooping for you punishing me. And that's what they said, because they didn't know no better. Mm -hmm. But I understood when I got older, when I got saved, really, mm -hmm. that they would discipline me to make sure that I did the right thing when it came time, when they weren't around. Mm -hmm. Right. It's nothing worse than a grown, overgrown person mm -hmm. still doing childish stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to tell you the honest to God truth. Come on, you know, anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Amen. But we don't have no other choice sometimes because we just don't know. We just don't know. We think it's all right to keep the change from the person who gave you too much change. Mm -hmm. Bad. Yeah. That's the story. We think it's all right. Some of us, we, we holler like, oh, it's a blessing. No, it's not. That's for somebody right there. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's not God blessing you mm -hmm. when somebody then gave you too much change right. back. They're going to come up short in that drawer All and they right. got an answer for that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's not a blessing. That it's not a blessing them giving you something that don't belong to them. Yeah. Okay? Now, I'm running on. I stayed too long with that anyway. Uh, uh, did I finish reading Matthew? I did, didn't I? I oh, knew you're not. Indeed. Let's mm -hmm. go to the church that had no problems. Hmm. Revelation 3 8. The church that Jesus did not chastise. The church that was doing what they supposed to do. Revelation 3, what did I say? 8. 8, that's right. Is it 7? That's exactly what it starts with. Mm -hmm. The church at Philadelphia received no admonishment from the Lord Jesus. Matter of fact, he said they were faithful. Hmm. Reminds me of what he said to the centurion. Said, "I've not seen such great faith." Hmm. The church in Philadelphia. How about it? Are we there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Verse seven, Revelation three seven. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write: These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts. 
and shut and no one opened. Now y'all know where that scripture is. Hmm. Where it says that God can open the door that no man can shut and he can shut the door that no man can open. Hmm. Yeah, y'all know where to find that, okay? All right. All right. I know y'all have been looking for it. <laughs> there it is. You can write down your Bible right there. Right. Revelation 3, 7. He know your works. I know your works. See, I have set before you, oh, I love this, an open door. Woo, Jesus. And no one can shut it. Hey, hey, listen to this. For you have a little strength and have kept my word and have not denied my name. Oh, Lord Jesus. You know what that says to me? Can I tell you what that means? That's the church that didn't compromise. All right. No matter what was going on. No matter how much manipulation and intimidation and temptation that came about, they still stood for the Lord. Is it in your Bible? It's in your Bible. He said, you have a little strength, though. He said, you kept my word, and you have not denied my day. Look what he said. Listen, what He said, indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, in other words, those that are operating up under the auspice and up under the the influence of the enemy, he says, and, 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 and who say, he talked about, who claim that they are of you. In other words, claim they are Jews. Yeah. And are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet. Did I just talk about that a few minutes ago? Mm -hmm. That he going to make your enemies your what? Footstool. Hey, hello, somebody. That's what a footstool right. is when they come to your feet. Mm -hmm. He said, worship, and to know that I have loved you. Listen, I like to think that Red Sea is Philadelphia. All Amen. right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I, listen. Okay. Y'all don't want to say, I, I heard just a couple of hallelujahs and amen. So I'm just going to talk about me. I like to think I'm the church of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I have, I, listen, I'm not bragging or boasting. I'm just saying I'm obedient. Mm -hmm. I ain't denied the Lord. I've been tempted. Oh, mm -hmm. We've been tempted. All right. Mm -hmm. Now I want to go back. Can I go back to business? Remember I told you each one of these churches, the spirit, the, 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 uh, Jesus was talking to the what? The angel of the church. Right. Y'all remember I told y'all what the angel of the church was? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The leader of the church? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now and I also told you that you gotta see yourself in this yeah. in, in, as an individual. Right. Okay. Right. Now listen to this. You have to be able to do a self-examination according to the word of God. I'm not talking about what other folks saying about you. Right. I'm not talking about what you think about yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't care about what you say about how you compare yourself with somebody else. Well, I'm all right. I'm good. You know, hair away. I, I'm not concerned about hair. Even if hair your husband. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. This is what God is saying. Listen, because I have too many, listen, I know too many folks that are saying, y'all, that's in a marriage, and they want to sit there and say, you know, I'm good because my wife's good. No! Your wife holy, you unholy. Now, don't get me wrong. You just ain't, want, you ain't acting right. You say, but you ain't acting right. Mm. Mm. But your wife acting right. Can I put it like that? Mm. I get my husband <laughs> say something, you got to get some acting right. Yeah. See, when we know to do good and don't do it, it's sin. Put, Flat out. That's what the Bible says. I believe it's in James. Yeah. For me to know what good to do and I don't do it, it's sin. And I can't help. Listen, I didn't do nothing wrong. But you didn't do anything. That's the problem. You spoke been doing something. And you didn't do anything. It's sin. So say the word of God. So the Lord tells me that he's going to vanquish my enemies because he's talking about a faithful church. Hmm. That's the one without a spot of blemish, by the way. Y'all right, right. know the one he said coming back for? Mm -hmm. yeah. He said coming back for a church that has no what? Spot of wrinkles, some say spot of blemish, whatever way you want to put it. He talking about, he's talking about that church in Philadelphia. Hmm. He said to them, listen, you've been faithful. Am I reading my Bible? Yeah. That's the way I see it. In verse 10, because you have kept my command to persevere. Right. You didn't quit, Bishop. Mm -hmm. Bishop, you didn't quit. Mm. You persevered. You stayed faithful to the vision. You didn't go a short route. You didn't go a check. You didn't let them folks come in and tell you, say, listen, this is what I believe the Lord is saying to you. You need to do this right here. You stuck to his plan. All right. 
I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world. Mm -hmm. Now, this right here is good news. Pay attention, mm -hmm. Church of Philadelphia. Come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. You better understand, two years ago we had a test. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And then it was another test. Mm -hmm. And it's another test. And here it is, because remember now, it's not a test of spiritual things. It's a test of things that are temporary. Mm -hmm. This too shall pass. Mm -hmm. Test of temporary things. All you got to do is wait it out. That's right. Stay faithful and wait it out. Yeah. See, first it was COVID two years ago. Mm -hmm. Then it came all these barriers, right? Now it's monkeypox, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Folks spreading over $5 a gallon of gas. Let me tell you something. You a witness. I doubt that you, 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 listen. I ain't messing with y'all, but y'all better learn how to testify. Listen, <laughs> gas $5. Mm. Folks still driving 40 miles to church. Uh -huh. mm. All right. Amen. It ain't running out of gas. Amen. Mm. Amen. But folks trying to go around the corner uh -huh. to the liquor store, uh -huh. got to push. Mm. 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 See, the church, you ain't got to be worried about family. Yeah. Am I right about that? I look at scripture and I see family on top of family. Mm -hmm. I see one happen during Abraham's time. I see one happen during Isaac's time. Is that right? Angel. See one happen during Jacob's time. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and they represented God's people and they still ate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody else starved to death, dying. Yeah. But God made a way for his people. Mm -hmm. You better wake up and hear, mm -hmm. you better hear this. Mm -hmm. What kind of God would we have that didn't take care of his people? Mm -hmm. And by the fact, what by the way, he ain't asking nobody to come and sacrifice stuff. All he asking you is to be mm -hmm. willing and obedient. Mm -hmm. yeah. I seen something mm -hmm. disturbing. That's why sometimes you gotta shut yourself down from social media and other stuff. That's why my ears tired. Oh, my ears tired. <laughs> I need to listen more to the Lord. Mm -hmm. This represents an altar. Okay? And when you look at scripture, an uh, altar means it's something that you bring as a sacrifice to give the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you go back in the Old Testament, they put animals on the altar, okay? Right. All mm -hmm. right? It's a sacrifice. That's why I want to tell you about the doctrines of devils, mm -hmm. all right, and manipulation. See this thing where this pastor had this couple, married couple, mm -hmm. come and Copulate on the altar wow. in front of everybody in church. Wow. Mm. Crazy. Talked about while they there, we're going to be praying because they were barren. Mm. We're going to be praying. First of all, y'all remember that word manipulate? Yeah. Remember that word manipulate? Yeah, boy. The enemy is very subtle. What you desire most. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is where you're gonna get you, yeah. Yeah. because that was the only way I could feel that they could actually, mm -hmm. you know, do that. Yeah. Uh, that's no different. I'm sorry. Can I say it? It's no different than pornography. Right. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's no different than pornography. <laughs> right. That's crazy. I, I yeah. That's crazy. Now, of course, they had them covered up and all this thing right here, mm -hmm. right? You know. But the bottom yeah. line is that yeah, you knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, I, I, you know, when I was concerned about sis. They got no children in church. Serious. Wow. They didn't have, you know, how we gonna pray. Well, first of all, you know what I see wrong with that vision? Mm -hmm. I see everything wrong with it, first of all. Mm -hmm. I don't see nothing right with it. But let me show you the, the lie. First of all, I can pray with you without you being there. Mm -hmm. And pray for that specific thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If we know you barren and you don't came and, and, and maybe you didn't you maybe just told the pastor, you know. First of all, he ought to have been fasting and praying with you, telling you to fast and pray. Mm -hmm. The second thing is this right here. While he manipulated them to do that, they trying to manipulate God to do something to them. Mm -hmm. When I'm reminded that the God that we serve mm -hmm. had a virgin be impregnated. Right. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Mm -hmm. The God that we serve 
had a 99-year-old woman. He done that twice, by the way, with Sarah and Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Women past childbearing age. Why, 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 why I need some crazy, uh, 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 first of all, they probably went without, with one accord, no way, because first of all, it, yeah, they would want accord, wasn't it, for yeah. foolishness. But I'm sitting here saying, there's no way that I would have, that, that I could have been there and he said that and I stayed. Right. Mm. Matter of fact, I've been calling the police <laughs> for indecent exposure. Mm. Hmm. I told you, the mindset, the enemy will make you things that you think. Anyway, I'm done with that. But he told me he was going to vanquish my enemies because I'm the church of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. See, I don't have to, see, when, I, when, 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 I, when I'm pleasing to the Lord, he won't withhold no good thing from me. That's right. Now, that's probably the reason why they're barren. Okay? Mm -hmm. See, God sees everything. Mm -hmm. He knows the end from the beginning. And we don't see that, oh, they're a nice couple. They love children and everything. They ought to have some children. But what if every one of their children that they were going to have was going to be severely handicapped right. and they wasn't going to be able to handle it, whether financially, mentally, or emotionally? Right. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. How about the fact that every time that, that God knows his right hand, that every time they were to uh, 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 be, be impregnated, that they would miscarry? Right. Mm -hmm. And what they would do, that poor woman, Mindset. Right. You understand what I'm saying right. to you? Right. See, I trust him to know what's best for me. Right. Thank you, Lord. I trust him because all things work together for good for me. Yeah. Now, let's go to this church right here, the one that everybody talks about. Revelation 315. Amen. You know in this church uh in, in uh in Philadelphia, if you look at verse uh, twelve, he tells you he's gonna write his own name on, on that church. I thank God. I say I'm the Church of Philadelphia. Now, Amen. Now listen, now Amen. Listen. I'm the Church of Philadelphia. I, I, I belong to Him. He got a stamp on me. Yep. Says that. Listen, I, I don't. I don't mind having an ownership stamp on me <clears throat> by the Lord. You understand right. what I'm saying? Right. See, I'm not ashamed of the Lord. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm not ashamed to tell nobody who I am. No folks be messing me because I say I'm a Christian. Say you a saint. I say okay, Christian saint. I, let me tell you, I'm a believer follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, I'm one of these ones right here telling you, you ain't one and you need to be one. Oh my mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even when you claim you one. Mm. I'm that one. Mm. You got a real one here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the church of Laodicea. Verse 15. 315. Y'all there. Y'all don't even have to turn your Bibles. Your page people. Nope. Look right here, we're going to start at 14, like the bishop said. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, they so pitiful, write this. These things says the amen, <laughs> the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. It's no mistake about who's talking here, right? Mm -hmm. I know your works, that you are neither cold, cold nor hot. How many of y'all drink coffee in the room? Yeah, yeah I just want to see a little hand of coffee. Now, I'm not going to mess with you. Just show me if you drink coffee or not. Because I need a professional opinion here. <laughs> if you drink coffee, just raise your hand just a little bit. Captain on the one. You got to let y'all shame drink coffee. It ain't, it ain't alcohol, golly. <laughs> I got ADHD. I can't do it. Okay. Yeah. So I got three people who drink coffee. Y'all really drink coffee like daily, right? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. I've heard this, and you tell me if it's true or not. They say the worst thing that you can have is a warm cup of coffee. Mm. Is that true? You don't drink coffee. <laughs> I used to. Okay, man. So is that true? I mean, he didn't raise his hand. That's why I said that. So is that true? Is that true? So I, I must say this right here. Because they make cold coffee now, right? Right. 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 They got iced coffee. Right. Right. Iced yeah. coffee. Yeah, they sure do. And then, they, oh, so, so now, do you see that 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 concept right there? Uh, yeah. Huh. So the bottom line is this right here. You either gonna have some iced coffee mm -hmm. or you're gonna have some what? Hot, hot coffee. coffee. Yeah. I said the same thing about tea. You either gonna have some iced tea. Yeah. 
Awesome what? Hot tea. tea. Right. Because anything in between just ain't 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 it ain't it what is. it is. It ain't uh-huh. it. Yeah. And so can you imagine that some say now the Bible says this right here. He says that neither hot nor cold. I wish that you could be one of them, cold or hot. Yeah. Hmm. He so so then because you are lukewarm. <laughs> Luke, lukewarm. The only thing that lukewarm is good for, I, in my opinion, is what. Now, and, and it's just my opinion, because it's not my 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 choice. Is that if you want to, you know, put your baby in a bath, a lukewarm bath. You know what I'm saying? Put your baby in a lukewarm bath, because you know you take a hot bath, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You, when we when we want to get in the bath, so we're gonna take a, you know, it's gonna be more than lukewarm, because we gonna right. like the soak of the bath, right? Yeah. right. So that's why I think lukewarm for is put babies in to make sure one they don't get burned, they ain't right. too cold to shock them, right? right. Nothing else, because he said, I will spew them out your mouth. Some, like, some other translations say vomit. Can you imagine that? Mm-hmm. It, because, you know, that's, a, that's like, yeah. I don't care. I'm, that's too much dramatization. Listen, he said that I am going to, oh, it says right here. My translation said vomit. What would yours say? Spew. Mm-hmm. Spew. Mm-hmm. Okay, I love vomit. <laughs> it tells you how, how much, how hard and how, Quit, I want you out of my mouth. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Okay. How much force I put behind it. Yeah. Hurry up and get out of my mouth. <laughs> because you say I am rich. I have become wealthy and have need of nothing. Ooh, mm. wee. Y'all hear that? Mm. Church of Love City. Who that, what that sound like to y'all? One word. One word. Okay, she says, ma'am, come on. Mm-hmm. Pride and greed. Because mm-hmm. I'm wealthy, right? right. I already mm-hmm. have it. Mm-hmm. And I have needed nothing. Right. And do not know that you are, and you don't know that you, that, and, and she, he's talking to her, and you do not know that you are wretched, wretched and miserable, miserable, poor, mm-hmm. blind, and naked. Right. Mm-hmm. Even though you dressed in your Louis. Mm-hmm. Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, I, thank you, Bishop. I was gonna say your Louis Vuitton, your uh, red bottle. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though you eat fried <laughs> lobster tail, mm-hmm. which uh, which is marvelous, they tell me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you you done had your laser surgery. Mm-hmm. And you got a wad in your pocket like Country Wayne? Because mm. Country Wayne keep a wad in his pocket. You better pray. <laughs> he do. I, I'm, I'm assuming he don't trust banks, but I don't yeah. know he <laughs> You got a wad like that, and then number 100. Yeah. Number 100. Yeah. <laughs> but yet the Lord says that you are miserable, mm. poor. Blind. I don't have to tell you because your ears are tired anyway from look, yeah. listening at the news and listening to the news. Y'all know what all the celebrities do. Mm-hmm. Y'all know that Johnny Depp, you know, won his case and right. all of that. Y'all know that. Right. Y'all know yeah. that. Right. He will never see that money. But yeah, y'all know that. <laughs> oh, y'all know that. Okay. <laughs> but but you know all of that, and and you wonder, you think about those people. They got the money, got the fame, mm-hmm. and yet they're poor. They're miserable. Mm-hmm. They're wretched. Mm-hmm. To the point to where Lord, they're killing themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they, they are. They, they're literally, and that's the enemy in their mind, saying, you know, it's something better than this. Where other folks look at you saying, you got the best of everything. Mm-hmm. But the enemy wants to show them that, you know, something better than this right here. Go ahead and go now before they get with Jesus. So they can see and get the truth that all that is going to fade away. Mm-hmm. Y'all have heard preachers preach this that, you know, Nobody's going to have no U-Haul pulled up at the, you know, at the graveyard and all this when you go. It's true. You can't take no money with you. And some of us, you know, we get to the place where we get so rich, we don't even want to leave nobody nothing when we die. We really just want to take care of uh, Luke 13, right quick. Uh, the Laodiceans people had no faith. They was easily swayed. They was easily deceived. They were economically prosperous, which is temporary. But mm. they had a 
spiritual poverty, hmm. which is what, which is really what the parable. Uh huh. Uh, Luke thirteen is what I say. Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna try to rush because I spent a little bit too much time. Uh, I want to share a little bit. Maybe God didn't want me to share, but I want us to, because we have to see ourselves. Listen, I said before, God is talking to the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's talking to us. I'm the church. You the Amen. church. Amen. He's, he's talking to us. Luke 13, 25 through 27. Amen. 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 If you go back to verse 24, it tells you what to do. I told you before that we are what? Striving church, did I say that? Mm -hmm. We're striving. Right. Strive to enter through the narrow gate. That's the path less chosen. Mm -hmm. That's not the majority. Okay. <coughs> For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. They are going to want to see. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. Sound like them folks knocking on the, on the ark door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he will answer and say to you, I do not know you. Where are you from? Where are you from? Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. That's that right there. You just condemned yourself right there. You point blank said that you was in his presence. Uh huh. He, he, you heard his teaching and all of that, but you didn't do what he said. Mm -hmm. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you. Or where are you from? Get gone. That's not what he said. <laughs> Scripture says, depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. What am I saying here to you? The church at Laodicea was a vacillating church. One minute, they like, I'm all for the Lord. Next minute, I'm accommodating the world, okay? And because they had, you know, no, 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 no need, so to say, mm -hmm. or they didn't want for anything, uh, so to say, uh -huh. they figured that their riches, like some fear right now, their riches is gonna, gonna get them to heaven. Uh -huh. I right. can buy my way to heaven. Mm -hmm. I can give to all these, like, like I would say that, that folks did, that the, um, the people that give, you know who I'm talking about, those people that give all the time to charity, oh, and yeah. everything, oh, oh. you know what they call them people. What they call them? That's the word. I knew it was a P. Mm. <laughs> Those philanthropists. Mm -hmm. they, 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 you know, people feel like, you know, I could these, these good deeds. And because there's a teaching out there about this, that you just do good for people, do right. good for others, do good. You for don't, the don't, don't hold. And because the scripture tells us you shouldn't withhold your, you, know, you should withhold your good from somebody when you see them in need. Okay? And, and, and that's one part of the scripture, though. But they got to be born again. All right? And so this was what this church was. Basically, they was carnal. Mm. And they were fake. They were a church that had a nice edifice. They were able to take care of their bills and everything, most of the people. And that was it. They thought they was good with God. But they forgot what the church in Ephesus forgot, the first love. They sat there and they, they got tricked in believing that they were all right with God by their own, you know, pride. Mm -hmm. And this is what happened. Go to Ephesians 4.14 4, right quick. And I'm going to try to let y'all go home and get y'all some lunch. And a nap. <laughs> Somebody need a nap? <laughs> huh? No, we good. Okay. <laughs> Somebody need a nap, though. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is what it says to us. First, Ephesians 4.14, 4, because this is what the word should be to the Laodicea church that Jesus is saying. Amen. That we should no longer be like children. Mm -hmm. No longer be children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head of the church, Christ himself. The problem is that we got in this New Testament church, the first thing that I heard that he spoke to people 
might be in Pentecostal Sunday. He told Ephesus they forgot their first love. Mm -hmm. Is that what he told them? Yeah. That's why I got an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you try to be faithful, but you find your first love. You forgot why you're supposed to be doing this. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be all because of him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You found another reason. Mm -hmm. So you motivate pure. That's the same exact thing. It's not what you do, it's why you why? do it. Mm -hmm. why? What's motivating you to do it? I said earlier, if it's not because of a genuine love for the Lord, mm -hmm. if it's because <clears throat> of the fact that you're afraid of what God is going to do to you, mm -hmm. or afraid of what God is not going to do for you, right. or if you're doing it to appease others so that they can, you can get the accolades of men, okay? Or you, or, or you can be seen as something that you're not, really not, where you have faked everybody else out. <clears throat> the Lord will not, the Lord is not going to be mocked. So a man, Thanks. so is what he's going to read. Right. Because mm. God looking at you, look, he said he's looking at your what? Your heart. Everybody say that right quick. Y'all know that, that scripture. He's looking at your heart, your heart. Your heart. huh? But yet you keep doing stuff that's not according to your heart. Mm. Yeah, he said, listen, he said, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Right. Yeah. All right. It's like I'm preaching this word right now. I'm in the room with about, what, how many of y'all in here? I'm not even paying attention right now. But everybody in the room ain't in the room. All right. right. Mm. That's the truth. And this is the way we do the Lord. We'll even go to prayer and get on our knees in prayer with the wrong motive. Lord, I'm coming to you because I love you, Lord. When you know you are, you're really coming because you want something. Uh oh. Mm. Now, ain't nothing wrong with loving him and adoring him. But why we only come to him when we want something? Mm -hmm. How about when he gave me something? Let me tell you something. We spend mm -hmm. less time on our knees. Let me, okay, Lord, I got you. I, I, I got you. You right. You show sure right, Lord. Let me tell you what I say. Let's go to Acts first as I go to Pentecostal. Because this is what you need to know what it's all about today, brother. Acts 1. I'm looking at 4 through 8, and I'm going to read it right quick. Acts 1, 4 through 8 says something. And being assembled together with them, how my Jesus, he commanded them to not depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Mm -hmm. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. How about that? Mm -hmm. Therefore, when they had asked, this is us, listen to us. This is us right now. He tell you what to do, did he not? All right. yeah. He said, go there and stay there, and you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Right. Listen what the question got to be. They came together and asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Still think about fleshy stuff. Still mm -hmm. think about material things, okay? Mm -hmm. And he comes right behind them and hurry up and checks them to let them know, if you think that's what it's about, don't go to Jerusalem. Because mm -hmm. that's not what it's about. It's not restoring your kingdom here on earth. Mm -hmm. All right. He said, uh, uh, uh. He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons when which the Father has put in his own authority. You know what I found out? I said the same thing that the Lord told us two weeks ago. You got to wait on the Lord. All right. Mm -hmm. You got to wait on the Lord. He's reiterating this today. He's telling them right there, you got to wait on the Lord. Verse 8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, has come upon you and you shall be witnesses for to me. In where? Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and even to the end of the earth or the uttermost parts of the world. Mm -hmm. This is what this is all about. It's not about you. It's all about yeah. him. See, what I found out there is that obedience gets them to come together with one accord. They did, waited as they were directed. And you know what happened after they waited as they directed with one accord? They received what? What God said they were going to receive. This is what will happen to us. When we obey God and be with one accord and do what he says do, we'll receive what God said he's got for us. All right. You ain't got it yet because you ain't done what you're supposed to do yet. <laughs> go down to verse 14 right quick. You ain't got to go far. Mm -hmm. Look what they did. These all continued with what? One accord and what? Prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. They was all together together, okay? Mm -hmm. All together with one accord for one purpose. They obeyed the Lord. They went to Jerusalem. They sat there, but they wasn't sitting there saying, 
I said, oh, with the Lord, when are when, when, when he going to come on? When, when he said he promised us <coughs> something. Yeah, he made your promise. He going to make good on it because he's a promise keeper. Right. But you don't keep on going there. What you supposed to do is do what he told you to do last. Right. And he said, pray. Did you not hear what the Lord yes. said to us earlier this year? Prayer is going to prepare me? Yes. Is that what he told me? Yes. So what am I supposed to keep doing? Pray. Praying. So I can be what? Prepared. Yeah. All right. I'm not prepared yet. That's why it ain't happened yet. Mm. Verse 14, where I was, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. See, Acts 2 1 told me I'm going to receive power. You see that? Day of Pentecost. Mm. It happened. I read that, did I not? <laughs> Day of Pentecost, they were with one accord again, mm -hmm. doing what they were supposed to be doing, obeying the Lord, and being in one place mm -hmm. with one accord, doing what he told me to do. And what happened? Holy Ghost failed. Right. Boom! That's what that brother said. He said, boom. He said, and this is the thing. They persevered, though. Did y'all understand me? Mm -hmm. They persevered. See, prayer prepares me to receive the power that God has for me. Right. That's why I got to keep praying. Move on right quick mm -hmm. over to verse 42. Mm -hmm. It's 242, by the way. I'm running along right quick. I know. Am I talking too fast? No. I hope that I am. No. I want you to get it. Amen. Now, Peter had already preached 3,000 people that came to the Lord Ooh. the wow. day of Pentecost. Wow. Peter preached. All he did was preach the gospel, Bishop. He was obedient and he opened his mouth and said something. 3,000 people. You see that in verse 41, right? We're at it. And they continued steadfastly in what? The, the apostles', apostles doctrine, doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in what? Prayer. Prayers. Did I not tell you that prayer is preparing us? But yeah. the perseverance and the doctrine of the apostles, the teaching, we are going to receive what God has for us. When? Remember I told y'all, I said it last year in July, and I said it said a couple of times this year. Fellowshipping mm -hmm. is what's going to be necessary for us to be completely prepared. All mm -hmm. right. Prayer prepares me. Yes. Word of the Lord. Go down to verse 43. See the evidence? Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. You know mm. why? Why? Because they continue steadfastly with one accord, obeying God, teaching, and praying, and fellowshipping. That's what the first church did. Sometimes you got to go back to the basics. Sometimes you have to go back to the basics. All your programs that you want to do, we're going to do this now for the youth. We're going to do this right here. So those things are not going to work in this day. It is time, like he's talking to the churches, for us to repent and go back to the first love. Mm -hmm. Y'all still there with me? Look at verse 45 and 46. I'm, I mean, 44, I'm sorry, 44. Yes, through 46. Look at this compassion and love. Now, all who believed were together and had all things in common. That sound like with one accord. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Look what they did, that they were so with one accord and had concern and love and compassion. They sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. See, the rich young ruler couldn't do uh -huh. it. See, he couldn't be a part of this. See, I'm talking about right here. Mm -hmm. This is what God's talking about. He couldn't be a part of that kingdom of God, that church that Jesus wanted, that one without a spot of blemish. Because he couldn't sell his stuff. Right. He see his brother in need, and he shut up his bosom. Mm -hmm. But you see the love and the compassion here, right? Mm -hmm. Remember what the Lord told us? We won't, we shall not want. Mm -hmm. Y'all better hear. Right. I told you he repeated right. himself yeah. in a different way. Yes. Mm -hmm. You shall not want. When we do these things right here that he's telling us, they had all things in common with one accord, praying. They doing the teaching. They obeying God. They fellowshipping. Mm -hmm. And they had no want or no lack. That's what it said. Anyone had no need. I'm, I'm just, I, am I in your Bible? Mm -hmm. 
Then it goes down and says in verse 46, continuing daily with one accord in the temple. What you think they were going to the temple? What you think the temple was? They were going to church. Yeah. They weren't forsaking the assembly of themselves. You wonder why the church ain't striving. You wonder why the church ain't thriving. It's because we're not doing what he told us to do from the beginning. Mm, all right. Mm. We have got away from that. We all right with a virtual church. I'm not all right with it. Mm. God ain't all right with it. Yeah, I get encouragement through, uh, through text messages. Yes, I get encouragement with comments and posts on Facebook, but it's not the same as me coming face to face with my brother yeah, and sister right. and looking them in their face and they knowing I'm going through the same thing that they're going through. And that we're in this thing together. Amen. Yeah. Edifying one another. Mm-hmm. I told y'all the Lord say, sometimes all it takes is a smile. Mm-hmm. Your presence in a place mm-hmm. will encourage somebody Amen. to stay in this race. See, we see here, when we, as I continue to read here, they did it daily. And then, and they went together, they went to the temple and they worshiped. And then they went from house to house breaking bread. And they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Mm-hmm. They just want to be around the saints. Mm-hmm. Remember when you first got saved, all you want to do is be around the saints. Mm-hmm. Right. This Pope virtual church, these people mm-hmm. coming there, that mm-hmm. you can't do it. Praising God and having favor. I love that part. Mm-hmm. Did you see what they're doing? Mm-hmm. Daily one accord in the temple, worshiping, breaking bread from house to house, fellowshipping, eating their food with gladness and simplicity, not murmuring or complaining, without lack. Then they was praising God and having favor with all people. Do you see that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want the favor of the Lord? You got to do these things. And look what happened next. And the Lord mm-hmm. added to the church daily those who are being saved. Can we get back to the basics? Can we get back to the basics? Mm -hmm. See, he's telling us right now, it's some things that we as the church are not doing. Mm -hmm. He's talking to us, church, Mm -hmm. that we are not doing in order for the church to thrive. The church has already survived, okay? Mm -hmm. And it will survive. But we need the church to thrive. And in order for us to thrive, we got to go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. It ain't about programs. It ain't about conferences. It ain't about prophetic activations. It ain't about none of that. It's about us coming together with one accord so God can move in his people. That's real simple. Real simple. How did he add to the church? First love for Jesus. Loving them and to do the great commission. Go and be his witnesses. Mm -hmm. Teaching. Everything that he told us, sharing it with others, and being willing to do it. You can't do that via, you can do it via social media. Mm -hmm. But where you get the feedback from? Mm -hmm. How you gonna make the disciples? With that being said, the Bible is very clear. My ears are tired of listening to garbage. But my ears are not tired of what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. I am the church, and I need to hear the Lord's voice every opportunity I get. So today, I pray that you've heard the Lord's voice today. If you want to be a part of that church that don't have a spot of blemish, that Philadelphia church, well, it don't come by osmosis, and it don't come by your kinfolk, your mom and them and mm. your lineage, all them being bishops and, and, and evangelists and all of that. It's called about me having a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. That's how I become a member of God's family, how I become a member of the kingdom of God, how I become the church. The Bible is clear in Romans 10, 9, and 10 that I must confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, says I shall be saved. Because with my heart I believe unto righteousness and with my mouth confession is made unto salvation. Mm -hmm. And just like in the scripture that I I read not too long ago, that whosoever, Romans 10, 13 says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.
to say it. But be a temple, mm-hmm. just like that. That's how you become a bot power. Bot. You have to yield your life to him. You can no longer be in charge of your life. You are still responsible, mm-hmm. but you must yield your authority mm-hmm. to the will of God. Yield your will to his. That's how it works. And the way you do that is that you accept the saving grace of Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's what it does. God sent his son that you know that we may have life. That's what he said. He loved the world so much. John 3, 16 said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I like yeah. that. And it's a true statement. Jesus told you this right here. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. We got to go through Jesus. God said that. So how do I go through Jesus? Very simple. Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I am a sinner. I was born a sinner. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm in need of a Savior. But the only way that my sins can be forgiven is that it's got to be some shedding of blood. The Bible says in, in Hebrews that there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. And so it's got to be some blood. Now, God is not asking us to, to, to shed no blood. Jesus did that for us once and for all. Mm-hmm. He became the mediator. He became the sacrificial mm-hmm. lamb on our behalf. He was that lamb without a spot of blemish. The where he could pay his blood to pay the penalty for every person that has been born, is being born, and will ever be born. His blood was more than enough because it was God's blood. Mm-hmm. And so with that being said, I have to believe that. I don't care what, I don't care how gross it sounds to you. It's written in the scripture. And so I believe you have to believe that. And all you have to do is make a simple confession of faith. First of all, you got to confess that you're a sinner, that you need that Savior. And then you want to accept Jesus. Simple prayer like this. Father, I admit that I'm a sinner. And that I cannot save myself nor do anything to be forgiven of my sins. But I realize and I accept the fact that Jesus, your son, died on Calvary's cross to pay for my sins, to pay the penalty of my sins. I accept that saving grace. I accept that he did that on my behalf. And I accept him as my Savior, but also as my Lord. I want him to come and reign in my life. I want him to come and rule my life from this day forward. Father, I thank you for what Jesus did for me. Please right now accept me. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit so that he may lead, guide me into all your truth, Lord. And I just want to promise you that I'm going to serve you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name Amen. I pray. Amen. Just that simple. Amen. If you said that prayer with sincerity and heart, we rejoice with you and we say yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. hallelujah. You have been born again. Now what's next? Real, real, real simple. Tell somebody that you gave your life to Jesus today. After you tell somebody that you gave your life to Jesus, you begin to get you a Bible and you search and have the Lord, you ask the Lord to send you to a Bible teaching church so that you can grow in the admonition of the Lord. And then follow in obedience to what the Lord Jesus did in baptism. Because you must, he said, if you, you can't, you, you got to follow him in obedience. Nobody came to Jesus at night but Nicodemus, and, and, and he still got saved, by the way. That's what we believe. But Jesus said you have to come to him publicly confessing him. And that's what that means when you come and unite with a church and be baptized following his <coughs> obedience. That's our prayer right now. And we believe that for you. If you made that decision, please, please send us an inbox letting us know so we can send you some literature about your salvation experience and, and so that we can be praying for you. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to pray right now. Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you for that one or a minute, whether it was today or it's going to be tomorrow or the next day. It's going to hear this word today and it's going to prick their heart and they're going to be willing to give their lives to you, Lord. We come right now <clears throat> and we rejoice as the angels in heaven rejoice as one sinner comes to the Lord. We rejoice because, Father, we know that we, you, you have, this is your will that you have another person, another person that's been snatched out of the enemy's hand. And so, Father, we pray for them right now, Father. We pray, Lord, that you will send them somewhere, Father, to a church that will, that where they can grow in the avenues of the Lord. Father, we pray right now as we come against the enemy on every hand. 
that he will not steal his word. We ask and pray a hedge of protection around their, their eye gates and their ear gates, Lord, and especially their hearts, Lord. We pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that your spirit will rise up strong in them, Lord, and that he will lead and guide them to where they need to be, where you want them to be, Lord, in order to grow in the admonition of the Lord. We thank you right now. We pray for everyone upon the sound of my voice right now, Lord. We pray that it's well in their households, Lord. We pray that it's well with them, period, Lord. We pray, God, nothing but the blessings of the Lord to overtake them. We pray for those that are ailing right now, Father, that have sickness in their bodies, Lord. We speak healing to go forth right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We come right now and we pray for those, Lord, that are struggling with an issue, Lord, that they need deliverance. We speak deliverance to go forth right now in the name of Jesus. If you confess that thing and give it to God, he will gladly take it. And we believe you by faith right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Then, Father, we pray for others that did not give their lives to you, Lord. We pray, Father, that they don't wait long. We pray that your Holy Spirit will begin to continue to convict hearts that they may ask the question, what must I do to be saved? And it's all for your glory, God. Father, we thank you for all things great and small, but most of all, we thank you for Jesus. He's the one that paid it all. And it's in Jesus' holy and mighty name we do pray. Amen. 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 We thank you so Amen. very much. We're so appreciative of you joining us today. We pray that we'll see you again that you'll come back and join us on Wednesday night. Bible study at 6 p.m. or next Sunday around about 1145, 1245. We'll start at 1145 here in the building. We hope that you'll come and join us here at the building at 502 East Elms Road in the great city of Colleen, Texas. Uh, come and join us, please. And if you can, if you have to come back through the medium of social media, we appreciate that as well. Share this video if, you, if the Lord leads you, but we want you to continue to be a part of this family and know that we are praying for you and that we love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. A, a wonderful week. Go in peace, please.